hyperparameter tuning is one of the most important concepts in machine learning. This becomes even more important in the era of deep learning where the datasets are massive and even slight improvement in any performance metric might translate into a major difference in the, uh, in the field of the product itself. So in this video we'll actually compare all of the modern scalable hyperparameter tuning methods. We'll basically compare the four hyperparameter tuning optimization methods. Random search or slash grid search, both of them perform similar, the only difference is random search is like uh, used by default. So random search and Bayesian search with hyperopt, we'll see what that is. Bayesian search with combined with asynchronous hyperband and population based training. And in this video, we won't go into the details of the implementation of these algorithms, rather the comparison and their performance differences. So we will see and basic uh, we, we will see a basic overview of these uh, algorithms and how uh, they do what they do, but not we won't get into the nitty gritty details. So first of all, the experiment. We'll run a simple DC GAN on MNIST dataset to optimize the model for maximizing the inception score. So I assume that you know the basics of deep learning and the basics of GANs, right? So we'll use RayTune to perform these experiments and track the results on Weights and Biases dashboard because Weights and Biases dashboard provide you with uh, interactive uh, visualizations such as along with, with text such like this. Okay, so let's get started. The search space will remain constant throughout the experiment to make sure uh, we are fair. So we'll search across the learning rates for the generator, discriminator, and the beta one for uh, Adam optimizer. So let's get right into this experiment. Now, first of all, I'm sorry if my voice is a, sounds a bit tinny and there is a background noise because I'm not using uh, my the mic that I used to record my previous videos on. So I'm just using my laptop mic, right? That's the difference. Okay, anyway, let's get started. Random search. So, to perform random search, to perform random search using Tune, again the again the link to this report, the dashboard, as well as the uh, the entire code used to reproduce this experiment uh, is in the description. I won't go into the details of each and every part of the code because that is basically a simple DC GAN. But what I will have is code snippets for performing these optimizations. So to perform random search using Raytune, you just run tune.run, pass the training function, the resources per trial, number of samples, and the config. The config is basically the search space and extra things that you want to add in there, right? So let's look at the results. First of all, some models did optimize. So which basically means, again, we don't know how well they optimized because there is no baseline. This will act as a baseline. So, but some of them, let's assume that the ones that touched the peak, uh, they did optimize. So, the tuner got lucky and randomly chose good parameters. But some of the inception score graph for some experiments remained totally flat, which means you know that they did not optimize. The hyperparameter value was very bad. So when using random search, you might end up reaching the optimal value, but you end up wasting a lot of resource, and that is the takeaway, right? So again, let's think if this experiment took, let's say, an hour each uh, to run each experiment. Uh, a GPU time uh, on a GPU machine is really expensive on the cloud, right? So you might have wasted a few dollars on, on running run, runs that don't even move from being flat. So yeah this is the this is our takeaway and again here are some generated examples so uh, these are arranged in ascending order of the inception score so uh, some models did optimize well as you can see but as you move down you'll see some of them remain flat there is no output so let's move on to bayesian search and the basic idea behind bayesian search is not to be completely random in your choice of hyperparameters but instead use the information from prior runs to choose the hyperparameters for the next run right so the thing is, let's say if you have a run and that performs really well, just use that information uh, to to uh, you know choose the hyperparameter values close to the runs that performed well and then far away from the runs that did not perform well. And this is the basic idea behind any Bayesian thinking process, right? You use the prior information. So, uh, Hyperopt is a library that um, the hyperopt is a library that implements this and that is the standard library used for performing Bayesian testing so uh, we'll use that so there are three steps first you specify the search space in hyperopt 
so that is how you do it it's the same thing and then uh, specify the hyper opt search algorithm and pass the space metric and the mode and again we are we are using concurrency limiter and we'll set the max number of experiments to two now max number of experiments are basically the concurrent experiments so what bayesian search does is it runs let's say given number of experiments here in this case max concurrent is set to two so it it will run those many experiments and then use the information from these runs to run the next runs right so let's say uh, if this number was really high five or six it will run five or six experiments without looking without using the information of any other runs so this will become uh, almost similar to random search right so if this run if this exp if this value is too high you won't get any benefits of using hyper uh, using bayesian search so set that to two or if the number of experiments is really high in this case we, this is only 10 so i've chosen two but it was like 20 you can you could have chosen four or five anyway this is how you do it and then let's look at the results so the results are different from the previous experiment because the number of flat runs is just one uh, there are improvements so this implies that the search algorithm uh, choose hyperparameter values based on the previous runs right on average this performed better but the resource wastage can be avoided if the bad runs are terminated quickly right so we know at this point that these runs are not going to optimize the runs right here so what if we terminated those runs right here or maybe earlier right and just proceed with these runs so the experiment would have got oh, gotten over really quickly um, as compared to this experiment right so this is the idea behind asynchronous hyper band right so the idea is to eliminate or terminate the runs that don't perform well now this makes sense to combine this method with bayesian search to see if we can further reduce the wastage so bayesian search says that use the prior information and asynchronous hyperband says that even if using prior information doesn't work then terminate the runs let's see the results and this is quite drastic so only two runs out of 20 we chose 20 runs here right the number of runs is 20 in this case uh, but still only two of them reach the desired number of epochs or maximum number of epochs right so which means all the other runs were terminated right here very quickly so this means that by terminating bad runs early on in the training process we not only speed up the training job but also save a lot of compute resources right so up, up until now this was considered like uh, the best practice maybe but then uh, again, before moving to population-based training, let me just show you what this, these uh, these visualizations are. So this is parallel coordinates chart that you get from Bayesian biases. So it will show you how the value of one uh, hyperparameter affects the final inception score on any objective score. And here is the parameter importance, which shows the importance of a hyperparameter with respect to one score and and its correlation as well. In, in this case, we are using inception score. So with that said, let's just get into population based training which is the state of the art right again this was developed by google deepmind and the research paper came out i guess late last year in december but yeah i'm not sure but uh, some somewhere around that time so in layman terms what this algorithm does is it runs the optimization process for uh, for some time steps or iterations let's say t iterations but after every t iteration it compares the runs and copies the weights of good runs good performing runs to bad performing runs and then changes the hyperparameter of the bad performing runs to be very close to the good performing runs so let's consider this example so let's say there are three uh, runs right pa executing in parallel right of course this this diagram does not exactly mean that but yeah we'll use that so after every t steps or t iterations it will stop in this case 5 So it will stop and see how they perform. So some of them will perform really well. Let's say the middle experiment, the middle run performs much better. And uh, the worst performing runs is this one, right? So what it will do is it will copy the weight of the best performing run in the worst performing run and change the hyperparameter value of the worst performing runs to be very close to the good performing run. And the thing to note here is it does not basically, it does not copies the same value from the be better performing run or the best performing run it just chooses a value very close to it right so and it repeats that process over and over again and so in that way all of the runs perform well but the thing is it will also see if even after doing all of these hyperparameter mutation and stuff even if 
then it the run is not performing well it will terminate so it is like the best of all the worlds up until now it will use early stopping it will use prior information and it will also use some other tricks up its sleeve so although it sounds really simple uh, a lot of complex optimization math goes into building this from scratch so tune provides a scalable and easy to use implementation of state of the art pbt algorithm population based training so let's see how to use that with Raytune. Uh, you define a scheduler. You uh, set that time attribute, which is basically uh, time steps t. In this case, metric, inception score, the mode to maximize, and perturbation interval is uh, the time interval or iteration interval after which you perform this algorithm. In this case, is five. Right After every five steps, after every five iterations, it will do all of these things, compare the runs, and copy the weights, and mutate the parameters. Right. Now, finally, just do the same thing, you not run, pass all of these things, and we are good to go. Now, here are the results, and here is a really intriguing result. All of the runs, all of the 10 runs, optimized really well. As you can see, the variance in this graph is really, really low. Just to give you context again, uh, the variance here is really high. The variance really is really, uh, here is really high, and of course, in random search you see a lot of them even stayed flat so pbt manages to optimize all of these runs so as you can see and even the highest score uh, in the experiment was uh, reached by one of one of these these runs in the pbt algorithm right so even the runs that started off as bad as you can see some of the runs stayed flat in the beginning they also were like tuned in a way that they also optimized in the end so the basic takeaway here is that none of the, uh, the runs stayed flat so all of them optimized and no resource has been wasted but now let's see how did pbt manage to optimize the runs that started off with bad hyperparameter values right the answer is hyperparameter mutation done by pbt scheduler so remember every time step t the algorithm also mutates the values of hyperparameters to maximize the desired metric and that's how the parameters were mutated by pbt scheduler for this experiment so let's see the graph here but the graph says it all. It starts off with some values, the, the default values, and it, the algorithm constantly mutates, constantly tunes these values to maximize the inception score. So this this is the actual graph of this experiment, right? I have tracked this using weights and biases. And what this does is, as you can see, it is just trying to choose the values to maximize the inception score. It only cares about that. So this operates on explore and exploit principle methodology, mean, meaning it explores various values for every time step t. And then once you get some good value and a bad value, it will exploit that uh, by copying the good and bad, right? This is the basic idea. Uh, this graph here is not related to the experiment. This was on, take, this is taken from official PBT uh, blog from DeepMind. And this looked really interesting to me. So I just took it. And I have pasted it here. Uh, so the blue dots here represent the new runs generated by the PBD scheduler, and the uh, pink dots represent the initial agents. Uh, blue are like final ones. And some of the runs are terminated, those are like black. Uh, uh, black dots, right? Okay, so let's try to make things more difficult for PBD, PBD scheduler. We will reduce the number of runs to five in order to make things more difficult, right? Let's see how this performs in under restricted circumstances. and. As you can see here, this is the result. Even after, even with reduced number of runs, it just manages to optimize each and every single one of these runs. And again, one of the things is that I missed right here is that it also terminates the bad performing runs. So you start off with all of these runs, all the 10 runs, but as you reach the end, the runs are reduced, some are terminated. And finally, you will only have one or two runs. And the same happens here with the reduced number of runs it starts with five and it just kept, keeps on tuning itself and finally reaches there's only one run right so now let's compare the average inception score so we have averaged out these inception scores so random search is uh, the 10 runs uh, bayesian search also has 10 runs P uh, with hyperopt uh, asynchronous hyperband has 20 runs pbd scheduler has 10 runs and pbd scheduler with five runs let's compare them right so as you can see, there is a there is a major difference in both PBT um, algorithms. So both of them are uh, are performing similar, uh, but the other algorithms are not performing so well. So 
yeah, this is the, the major takeaway from this experiment. So yeah, PBT is, is really, really state of the art at this point. But again, the thing is it uses a lot of computations. So if you are using simple experiment like this one, this is like it is not supposed to be used in this experiment, right? I've just used this for demonstration purpose because it takes up a lot of CPU time. Uh, so you have to use this in, in environments where uh, the GPU time really matters. And that is the major portion of the experiment or the CPU time. Uh, but yeah, this proves the point that uh, about the performance of PPT algorithm. The link to this report, the dashboard, as well as the entire code to reproduce this is in description. And of course, this is the end of this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video and a lot of lot more content like this and related to other things such as building projects and deploying them is coming soon. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for them and see you next time.